esas personas en la judicialización en la ley del deporte tendrán su sanción económica fuerte. If you think that was crazy, let me tell you the story of what I did the rest of the week. It's so loud. My name is George Gammon, and this is my real estate investing vlog. So yes, I did go to a soccer game, and yes, it was absolute insanity. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the vlog. But my week started off with a call from my hard money lender, Chris, and I talked to him the other day about maybe finding some houses that might be for sale here in the Provenza area. So he's got a real estate agent that he says he knows that has some properties here locally that are for sale. So we're gonna go over there and check them out. Hey buddy. So we went down to meet this gal for coffee and immediately she starts talking to me about all this opportunity in the area, selling me on all these pipe dreams. For example, we bought this one, uh, the, the one in the corner. We're gonna construct four uh, apartments. Different properties that we could subdivide and rent out. Two lendings because I have a company of interiors. Mm -hmm. We are gonna charge at least 4,000 a month all these extravagant numbers. And then she showed me all these just pictures on her phone, which really didn't do anything for me because no matter what a picture looks like on, on your phone, the actual real property is probably not gonna look like that. So you can show me all the pictures on Pinterest and everything you want, but, but there is a massive delta between what a, it looks like in a picture and actually doing something in real life. And then once we went on the tour, she showed me uh, some things that were for sale wasn't exactly what I was looking for. I think the big takeaway there for you guys as real estate investors is that you always want to look at the numbers as they are right now, if you're using those numbers to determine what to pay for a particular property. She was telling me all of these numbers and all these projected numbers. This is gonna make this amount, and once we get this project done, it's gonna make this amount, and this amount, and this amount. I'm gonna, we are gonna charge, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna charge 4,000. Those numbers can come to fruition, and they may not. And most of the time, it's, they may not. And as a real estate investor, you never, ever buy an asset based on projected numbers. You buy an asset based on the existing numbers and use that to determine what you're willing to pay for that actual property. That's the real lesson with what we just did. Next, what we did is I got a call from Joaquin. Joaquin's actually been on vacation for the past week. So we had to kind of put the projects on hold. Now the two projects that we have that we've been documenting on this YouTube channel are the art apartment remodel project and the platinum apartment remodel project. I got a call from Joaquin and he said, listen, we need to meet over at the art apartment because I'm really not happy with the, the plan that we have for the master closet. I went over there and he, I actually, he had multiple problems. First and foremost was the closet because this art apartment is a penthouse. So it's got these wooden vaulted ceilings, which are a fantastic feature, but unfortunately they make it really, really difficult to plan things like master closets. So now in the right in the design, you have something like this, and then you have the door that is here. So you have this level, then you have this level. I didn't want to enclose the closet because you've got so much natural light coming into the master bedroom from those windows. And Joaquin wanted to have it to where it was a normal entrance. So it went up like this to the side and down. But if you put it down, then you're going to be building a strip of drywall across these windows. I don't like we that. We need to cut this window. I don't think it's worth it, man. For me, it defeated the purpose of taking advantage of all of that natural light coming out. I think you could trim it out and go from here, up here, and then around. I don't like this thing. How it looks this? He didn't want to do it because he thought it would look really weird. So that's the other option that is here, like a car, and then something like this. 
but I don't see the point of making an arc. I just, I think you just no, trim it out. Uh, the straight, just, you gotta put trim. So you got, just like the baseboards or something, you just trim it out so it's trimmed down here, it goes to here, the trim comes down, or the, and then just goes across. Let's just do that, and then if it looks terrible when we get done, well, we can figure out how to change it. So he emailed me the, the picture of the render of this new closet that we had designed. And then once I saw that on my phone, once I saw the picture, then I went ahead and approved it. So moral of the story is don't approve something, uh, don't approve a new design until, no matter how great you think it's going to be, until you've actually seen the render of that design. And this is the material that, that we buy from the floor. Perfect. This. Perfect. I am not completely happy because it's different white. Yeah. You can see this is more shiny, this is bad. That's the only that I am very happy about this. He thought that when we put these two together, that it just, it wouldn't look right. So the tile is just here. Okay. And then how are you going to finish it with it right here? Um, You're going to do the black border right yeah, there, right? The black border. What if we do a black border right here? So the tile, the floor is the same. right, goes to right here, right about this, and then right here, you just do a black border. So then, the transition is from this to the black, yes, to the bow tie. Because we have the canal here that is black. Yeah. So we can probably hear black here. There you go. Black, black. There you go. And then right that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that marble tile and between the marble tile and the actual bow tie tile, we were going to put in some black subway tile because this, the black subway tile is a much better transition from the marble and it's a better transition into the bow tie tile. So the reason why this is important, if you're an aspiring real estate investor or a designer, this is the type of minutia that you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis because at the end, when the project's done, it's all those small details that make the difference in how fast you sell it or how fast you rent it out. That's something that most people would never think about, but if you think about the remodel at that level of detail, you're going to be head and shoulders above the rest. And again, you're going to have a lot more liquidity, which means you're going to sell the property faster and you're going to rent it out faster. Okay, cool. Do we need to go over to the other apartment? Uh, yeah, I prefer so. From the art apartment, we went over to the platinum apartment, which is extremely convenient because it's literally just right across the street in another building. It's a ninth floor penthouse and we're two weeks ahead on the art apartment from the point where we are in the platinum apartment. We just got done doing the demo on the platinum apartment. And it's really cool because it's got this jacuzzi already built into the master bathroom. The problem that we have in there is that the existing toilet was right between that jacuzzi and the shower. You have the space for the toilet here and then you have the sink. Yeah, I know, here. I know. So that's the only I don't like. So I think that if we move the, the jacuzzi to that corner, we can put the toilet there and we can close the toilet in that like a, yeah, right. I think, and um, then we can make like a shower here, more right? Here. And then you have the same, you don't have the same thing, the space, yeah. So that is the other option. So, well, I like that a lot better. The problem that we have there is we don't know if the jacuzzi was built into the actual concrete frame. So if we demo the concrete, we'd also be demoing the jacuzzi and we'd have to buy a whole new jacuzzi. I need to hire the carpenter or some guy that take the wood... Uh, take the wood off. Off and then we can see the concrete. Because the plumbing for me is only the drain, so it's not a big deal, the drain. We need to put a new wire for the toilet so we, need, we can put our point. You just wrap it around. Exactly. Okay. So, so the conclusion that we came to there was that we'd have a guy go over there and start pulling up the pieces of wood that surround the jacuzzi and kind of do a little more digging and find out if that's something we can move without ruining the, the jacuzzi itself. 
if we can move the jacuzzi without damaging it, then it's a, it's a no-brainer. We're gonna put it in that right-hand corner and have plenty of space for the shower and then a plenty of space for a, a toilet as well. So lastly, I had the opportunity to go to a soccer game. I'm here at the Classico game, which is Jim versus Nacional. And they just, you know, they hate each other. The fans hate each other. They actually divide the fans. They really can't sit next to one another because you just have, uh, you'd have like mass death and, <laughs> and chaos. And you just hear their different chants and they're singing their different songs. And it's, it's not just when they score a goal. This is going on the entire game. They're doing absolutely nuts. It's so loud here. I know this is all about real estate, but it's all about having fun too. It doesn't get any more fun than this. It is an experience that will totally blow your mind. The closest thing that we have to a South American soccer game in the United States is like a college football game, as far as the level of insanity. So if you've been to an Ohio State game, as an example, you're, you're about at a three on a scale of one to 10. Trust me, I'm not exaggerating. That's a three and these soccer games are a 10. That's the Delta right there. And Nassi and L started doing really well. They scored three goals. Going into halftime, they were they had a three nothing lead. They just, they just scored. I tried to get a picture of when they scored before. But the phone, my damn phone wouldn't work. They just scored again. And all of a sudden. To my left, I see these fans rushing through the couple security guards that they had there, rushing toward the tunnel where the actual players were coming in from the field. At halftime, when the teams were entering the locker room, some of the fans ran out there to throw beers. And I thought it was the, the Dim fans who were throwing beer at the other team. And my friend told me that they weren't throwing the beer at the other team. They are throwing it at their own team's goaltender for allowing three goals. So they were so pissed off at their own goaltender that they rushed out there and started throwing beer at him as he was entering the locker room. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. They went out there, started screaming at him, starting throwing beers as though that's gonna motivate them to play better. So the, the police came out and escorted the guy out. Everyone was booing that they escorted him out, but uh, it's kind of the difference between here and the States back home. Everyone would cheer for the guy being kicked out. Here they boo when they they kick him out, but uh, it was pretty mellow, really. For how many people rushed, how many fans actually rushed the, the entryway to the locker room, I thought it was gonna get really kind of nasty, but they just threw some beers at him and no one really seemed to care too much. But now they've got a ton of cops out here. All right, we've got to start up a new half. Hopefully we don't have any more, any more fights with the players and their own fans. We'll see, three to nothing. Right here on the field, we'll see how it goes. And that second half went through. It was a lot of fun to watch, but there wasn't any drama going on with the fans. That was up until about a minute left to go in the game. And just over my shoulder to my right, I saw this kind of commotion. It was absolutely nuts. And if you think that I'm exaggerating, look at the video. I didn't really blame the cops because I mean, this guy was nuts. But the, the family members of the guy that the cops tackled, they were actually screaming at the cops for like actually putting the cuffs on this guy or actually taking him out. They were pissed at the cops 
for basically doing their job, so. It was just uh, wild, wild, lots of fun, lots of fun. Most, I don't know, you might have been freaked out about it, but I thought it was just, it was fantastic. I, I loved every minute of it.